everybody, it's Miss Mary and I am back for Art Club. So I got a question uh, last month on Facebook about Art Club and the question was, "Can is this for adults or just for kids? And the answer is, it is for everybody. Um, if you are an adult who would like to join along and watch these videos and participate and maybe uh, try your hand at it, you are absolutely welcome to. We would love to see uh, your artwork as well. So yes, this is for everybody. It doesn't matter how old you are. Um, art is for everyone. And so we would love to have you join along with us. So this week, or rather this month, I thought that we would talk about an artist. Um, this was suggested to me that we do for Art Club. So we are going to be talking about Jackson Pollock. So Jackson Pollock um, was famous for making kind of these paint splatter um, images, but he actually started off doing something totally different. So we're going to kind of take a look back and, and see um, learn about Jackson Pollock and see where he started and where he ended up. So Jackson Pollock was born in 1912 in Wyoming. He was an American artist. He died in 1956, so definitely what we would consider a modern, po um, not modern poet, a mar modern artist. He was a painter, um, so paint was his medium, and medium, again, is just a fancy word for what you create with. So if you're a drawer, your medium is pencils. Um, if you're a painter, your medium is paint. So he was a painter. He went to art school in New York and he was influenced by artists like Picasso and Thomas Hart Benton. So I included some pictures here so you can see um, a Picasso, which is this one here. And Picasso was famous for having these crazy portraits that he would make um, out of shapes and like crazy colors. So like you can tell that that's a person, but it's not like a super realistic looking person. And that's kind of what Picasso was famous for. Um, we call the movement cubism, uh, but that's a whole other thing. And then Benton uh, down here, you can see this picture. His were a little bit more realistic, but they all sort of had that like um, wavy kind of curved. It looks like you're looking at it through like a fish eye lens. Um, everything is kind of rounded and curved in his paintings. And so that, um, those are the artists that Jackson Pollock was inspired by. So on the next page, we're going to look at a couple paintings of Jackson Pollock's that kind of look like these. So you can definitely tell uh, with the shapes and colors here that he was inspired by Picasso. And then this one definitely looks very similar to the Benton one on, on this slide. You can see um, everything kind of has that curved, rounded, um, kind of wavy look to it. Um, you can tell what it is. You know, you can tell that it's a couple of wagons here and horses and there's like a man on the horse and mountains and the moon or the sun in the background. Uh, but definitely what we would call abstract art, uh, meaning that it's not like a photo perfect representation of the object, but a little bit more abstract. Um, and so those were the artists that really inspired Jackson Pollock and got him kind of into art. Before World War II, European artists led the modern art movement, but after the war, we had a lot of immigrants to the United States and they would bring with them their ideas about art and um, some of the influences that they had from Europe. And so Jackson Pollock was instrumental in getting Americans involved in modern art and helping kind of jumpstart that movement here in this country. And a lot of other modern artists, um, American artists like uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat and Andy Warhol and Keith Haring, kind of all can credit uh, Jackson Pollock with helping to get the movement off the ground here in this country. So I'm going to minimize myself here so that you can see this. He became famous for drip paintings. And so you can see this picture here of him and what he, he has this massive canvas that he's uh, working with. And you can see he's got like a, a can of paint in one hand and a paintbrush in the other. And he's just dripping and splattering paint on there. And he wanted viewers to relate to colors and motion rather than images in his paintings, which is interesting because when we think of paintings, we always think like, well, what is it of? You know, I want to, I want to know what the picture is of. What is the painting of? And he didn't care so much what the painting was of so much as like the color and movement that went into it and um, how that made the, the viewer feel. So he used a lot of motion to create his paintings. You can see he's like splashing and dripping and splattering that paint all over the canvas. So definitely a lot of movement uh, getting in there with that. And he would mix different kinds of paints to get different textures as well. So let's take a look at a few of his pictures. Okay, so this one is called number 34. It's from 1949 and he made it with oil and enamel, which is a kind of paint on paperboard. So 
this picture, uh, you can tell, looks like he just kind of splattered paint all over it. Um, but if you look at it a little more carefully, let's look at the colors that are in there. Um, definitely a lot of white. The, the background is white, and then it looks like he put some white on top. There's also a lot of black in there, too. Uh, black splatters. There's brown, green, yellow, blue, kind of red, um, all kinds of colors in this picture. So I want to know what does this picture look like to you or what does it remind you of and how does it make you feel? Um, if we're not looking at what the picture is of and if you see something in the picture that's really really cool and I want to know what you see. <laughs> let me know, comment and let me know what you see uh, in some of these pictures. I would love to, to know. It's kind of like looking at clouds, right? Like you can imagine different things in there. Um, but what do the colors make you feel? And what kind of motion do you think he used to make this? Or what motion does it make you want to do? This one is pretty chaotic. It looks like just a lot of, of splashing around and um, that's kind of really cool too. I love this picture. It makes me feel really happy. Um, I really like the colors that he used in this and I think it's like a good balance of colors, like there's not too much of one or too much of another. Um, I like that he's got dark tones like gray and black mixed in with the really bright ones like white and yellow. Um, this one makes me want to go and paint something. This one just makes me feel really creative and really happy and inspired. Makes me kind of want to go dance. <laughs> uh, I really like this picture, so I'd love to know what you guys think of it too. Let's look at this one. This one is called Sea Change from 1947. It's oil and pebbles on canvas. So he used all kinds of stuff in his art to get different textures. And this one looks like if you if you were allowed to, which when you go to museums, you're absolutely not allowed to touch the paintings. But if you were, you could like run your hand down and it would probably feel really bumpy um, because of all the different textures going on there. So again, let's look at the colors here. What kind of colors do you see? At first, it looks like a lot of black. Um, and then around in the corners of the pictures, there's more white. But the longer you look at it, the more colors you can kind of see, right? It looks like there's some orange and blue, uh, maybe some like purple or pink in there. There's a little bit of green and brown, all kinds of colors in there, right? What does this picture make you feel? Does it make you think anything different from the one before? For me, this one feels different. Um, this one is a little more thoughtful to me. There's a lot going on in this one. Um, I still like it though. Do you guys like it? What do you think? It's interesting. I'm going to look at one more. Um, so Jackson Pollock, used this method for a lot of his paintings and obviously a lot of them were very colorful um, but as you can see like in this one it was gray mostly and so he called this one number 14 gray and he used um, enamel and gesso which is chalk based paint binder it's kind of like a binding agent on paper and so you can see um, this one has more black and white and gray and silver tones but there's a lot going on in this picture still what I notice about this one is that it's a lot more circular, right? It looks like a lot more circles, a lot more like um, curly cues, and a lot more like maybe he went like this over the paper to get those like round shapes in it. What do you think? How does it make you feel? Does it make you feel like excited or calm or like you want to move around or like you want to be still? It's definitely fun to think about because there's no wrong answers with art either which is nice. So this one is interesting too. And you can use that style even if you don't have like a whole full box of crayons, right? Like maybe you only have a few colors. You could still make really cool art with, with just what you have. So Jackson Pollock died in a car accident in New York in 1956. Um, in 2006, this picture here sold at auction for nearly $140 million, which is the highest price ever paid for a contemporary painting. Can you imagine spending $140 million on a painting? Would you spend it on that painting if you had that much money? What do you think about this painting? This one's interesting. Um, a lot of his pictures were huge too. Like I'm not really um, showing the scale of how big they are. I think you could see in that picture of where he's in there painting, but the, the canvases and the papers he used were so big, they would take up like whole walls. So what do you think of this picture? It's really interesting. This one has a lot more brown in it. Um, definitely darker colors, browns and like dark reds, black. 
but then on top he's got like yellow and white kind of splattered in there too it's interesting right and then of course there's like the question of is this even art what do you think i know a lot of people think of art as like classical art and like renaissance art hanging up in museums like things of pictures of people and places and like fruit bowls and stuff um but did, would you say that this is art too I mean, obviously the person who paid $140 million for this thought it was art. <laughs> so it's, it's just fun to think about, right? Art is all over and it's all kinds of different things to different people. So, you know, if you like one thing, that's great. And maybe you don't like this or maybe you do. And that's okay too. That's what art is for. It's, it's for everybody so that everybody can find something that they love in art. So now it is your turn for this project for Jackson Pollock. Um, you can do pretty much whatever you want. Um, it would be, I like, I would love to, like in my mind when I think about, oh, what I would like to do for this, I would love to take like a big roll of paper and just like a bunch of different colors of paint and just go outside in like my backyard or my driveway and like splatter paint all over the place and make a big mess. Um, Obviously, some of us aren't allowed to do that. Like, I'm not allowed to do that here at the library, for sure. Um, so if you do live with your mom and dad, make sure that you, they're okay with you um, doing an art project before you start doing it, right? It's always good to ask permission. Um, but this could be anything. This could be, maybe you do go outside and just splatter paint around. That would be so much fun. Um, the other thing that you could do, even if you just have crayons and paper, like you could just take your crayons and kind of scribble all over and like make those movements, you know, like like Jackson Pollock did and, and pick your colors and what kind of colors you want um, your your viewers to think about right like because we know bright colors mean like happier stuff and like green a lot of times we associate with spring and blue is more calming maybe it makes us think of water or the sky and darker colors are a little more serious so think about that when you're doing your artwork too yeah like what kind of colors uh you want to convey which different emotions to to the people looking at your art um, I think what I'm going to do I, is just get one of those like Crayola watercolor palettes that like you can buy up at the dollar store, you can buy them anywhere, like if you have school supplies, like the really basic ones, and just mix up the paint and get it like nice and watery and then just kind of splatter it on the paper. Um, I might try that, see how that comes out. So um, as always, we encourage you to try along, do Art Club along with us. Um, if you're watching this on Facebook, you can comment on this video with a picture of your art project. I think I'm going to create um, a hashtag for this too, which would be MPL Art Club, and you can um, upload your pictures to Facebook or Instagram with that. And tag us in it at Maitland Public Library and use that hashtag and I'll keep an eye on it over the next month and see um, you know if we get any any shares there so that we can all kind of inspire each other so um, I hope that you learned something today hope that you enjoy this and I can't wait to see all of your Jackson Pollock inspired artwork I will see you guys next time bye